So let's go ahead and take a detailed look at mean time between failure and how we can chart out what our mean time between failure is. And so we've listed, I've gone ahead and listed these components out in this spreadsheet as um, compute network, as you notice here, highlighted in yellow, network, security, storage, and then contributing factor. So we're going to talk through all three of these as we, uh, all four, five of these as we uh, have this video. So let's talk first about our compute environment. Remember, we're focusing on mean time between failure related to our compute infrastructure. So this happens to be a virtualized cloud infrastructure that we're talking about here. So critical to the environment is the access and access uh, either through Active Directory or some sort of LDAP service right here, account management and access. So is that system clustered, load balanced, dual path, other? Uh, so these classifications here are basically asking us, is the system clustered, um, you know, load balanced? So clustering usually an active passive type of cluster or an active active cluster. A load balance would be like an N plus one type of cluster. A dual path means that I have redundant ways to get to the data, like a switch, for example. Server has two network cards, it's dual path into that switch. And then other, like for example, um, Active Directory, he's synchronizing to a backup domain controller somewhere. I know they don't call them that anymore, but you, you know what I mean. So it's going out to different controllers at the same time. Virtualization, we break it down into two components. Remember, we're talking, when we talk about mean time between failure, we're really talking about is the system available for the customer to use and how fast can we get it back online? So we have virtualization, the management component of your virtual engine, whether using VMware or Red Hat or Hyper-V or Citrix Zen, whatever it is that you're using, it has a management component. Is it available? In this environment, uh, on the screen here, it's clustered. So it is available, highly available. And do we have virtualization, the hosting part? Usually there's some sort of hosted server in a Red Hat environment, for example. You have a RevM environment with RevH servers as the hosting. They're stateless servers that are providing the compute power for that virtual environment. It is load balanced. So that means in these two examples, there's no single point of failure here, right? They're all working. So do we have a hot spare on site? Yes. And is there a hot spare on the system? Yes. Meaning that we have two sites. System represents multiple sites. And hot spare on site means that is there a test and dev environment, for example, or a hot server just sitting there waiting on the shelf in the event of a failure? And the answer is yes. So let's look down at the network components. We're not going to go through each one of these as we've kind of gone through that top one. I think you get the idea, right? Is it redundant? In the network, we break it down by leaf component, spine. This is a leaf and spine network. So we have to take into consideration both the leaf and the spine component. If the spine goes out, all the leafs go out. So we want to make sure that we have redundancy built in there. Now notice here for the spines, we have no extras at the site. So in fact, this answer also is no, there's no extras for the leafs either, uh, but there are an in the system. So consumer network, converters, these are all different types of switch fabrics. Is it redundant? Absolutely. So we go down through the security, notice a firewall, IDS, IPS, the router, now it could be a network, it just happens to be in security. Is it redundant? Is there a spare? all of that good stuff, VPN concentrator, all of that. When you get down to storage, you really need to look at the storage head, what the backplane and the power looks like. And then of course you have the controllers in the storage array, you have the HBAs in the storage array, which are all redundant as well. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. The NAS head is redundant, the controllers in there are redundant and the HBAs in there are redundant. So you have full redundancy throughout the environment. The drive shelf, most storage area networks have a shelf, right? They have their controllers called the array head, and then they have shelves of disks, or what we used to call JBODs, um, and they're called DAEs now, uh, disk something enclosures. Um, so 
Do we have those? Are there multiple of them striped out? Yes, and we have RAID 10 striping out over those. And then, of course, access that storage environment is via a server so and the fiber fabric. So are those redundant? Absolutely. So we look down through there. And then these are some other contributing factors that, that, that will impact your mean time between failure. Do you have a tier one, th two, three, or four data center? And there are different specifications we don't go into in this video, but this is happens to be a tier three data center. We have redundant pipes coming in for connectivity, so you need to make sure you have redundant providers and pipes. And then are you doing practices within the environment that ensures wellness of that environment? So for example, are you following change and config processes? Are you patching your servers when they need to be? Things of that nature, and yes, 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 absolutely yes. So let's go to the next section of this screen where we really look at the mean time between failure and what the system availability is per month. So here, of course, we're talking about these different components, and it's not as important that we understand specifically. This is the compute section that we're talking about here, and these are the mean time between failure. Basically, uh, these servers, this is not, these are projected, are projected to, to fail within four to five years. They don't usually fail if it's a clean, solid environment. So what this calculation does is it says I have X amount of hours that's available. I have two units, meaning I have multiple servers in the environment. How many hours does that calculate out to be? Our annual usage, this means how many hours are there in a year? Basically, 365 times 24 gives you the 8760. You take the total hours, and now you can tell how many hours it is going to be. Um, projected failures, every basically every four years. And then uh, what the total outage. So what is this total outage? So let's continue over to this side. What's this section here. So this is really where you start getting into your percentages. What's the total outage, outage minutes per month? Remember in mean time between failure or when you rank your system as a 99.98 .98 or a 99.5 or you know there's lots of numbers. Essentially what that's saying is you have X amount of hours in the day that your system can be unavailable or minutes in the day that your system can be unavailable. So for example, 99.98, I believe, if I remember right, the average I is eight minutes and some seconds, eight basically eight minutes a day that your system can be offline, that that system can be unavailable to users. Excuse me, eight minutes a month, not a day. And that changes every month because remember there's different days number of days in the month, and this is calculated by hours, but generally speaking, you have 730 hours in a month, and then you take how many minutes it's unavailable. That system is unavailable. So that first line, line number three there that we're looking at, that says one minute a month, that basically says that if the customer is trying to log on to the system through Active Directory, if the primary Active Directory node goes down at the absolute second that they're logging in, it may ask them to re-log in again, hence you have a minute, because it's gonna, it's gonna automatically redirect traffic over to uh, the backup domain controller. So um, not a whole lot of time loss there. Virtual management, same thing. It's more user interruption than downtime because the entire environment is replicated, excuse me, the entire environment is redundant. So to get these mean time service times, basically we take these numbers, we take the max hours, we um, uh, divide by the time and service and we come up with a percentage of availability and then you go down through all of the components, which you can see these are multiple years, right? This this is how many years the mean time between failure is estimated on these devices, right? Lots and lots of time. Um, we take the average of all of those and come up down here with an average for the entire solution. Remember, the solution is made up of all of its components, although if some of the components are unavailable, the entire solution is unavailable. 
So it's an average, or you can take it by its lowest number, uh, whichever works. And then, you, of course, you have eight minutes of potential uh, monthly downtime. Now, what would augment this chart uh, very well is that if, if um, you had actual numbers to put in here instead of projected failure so that you could run a history. This is a new system. You're not going to have that. Uh, but in time, you may uh, be able to have those numbers and actually see if your projected equals reality.